Okay. So, guys, today what you can see is what we're going to be talking about today is vertical angles and doing some review. So, this will be, I'll teach you a little bit. Then we'll have you do a few problems to see if you're ready for the quiz. All right. So, what we're going to first talk about is what a vertical angle is. Okay. That's a key word. So, the key word here is, and the new term is vertical angle. All right. So that's when you're going to want to write down. You want to make sure you have, you know what this is, because this is key. You've already seen some of it, because we've talked about this a little bit. Okay, so we've already kind of looked at these. So when we're looking at this, you know that there's some things, there's some things you already should know, all right? First of all, that this is a supplementary angle. So these equal 180 degrees, right? So if we say that angle two is like 85, 80 degrees, right? Okay, then you know that from what we did, we said, well, we'd have 180. And, and most of you know how to s simplify this. You could prove, because that's what 8.1 and 8.2 was about. So you could prove that this is going to be 100 degrees, right? And then if I look, I can also say, well, I know that this angle is 180 degrees, right? Because that's also a straight line. So if this was 100, if angle one is 100 degrees, then angle four must also be 80 degrees, right? Notice that these two are congruent. Now I'm going to put a tick mark in here. Because that's what that's what that tick mark means is these two angles are congruent. Now, if these two lines, if line L and line M, were parallel, we could say something. You'd be able to show something else, but they aren't parallel. We could tell they're not parallel. Parallel means the two lines will never cross as they continue on their their infinities, right? But these two lines will eventually cross, so we can't say they're parallel. There's something else but what we can say is these are called vertical angles angle two and angle four are vertical angles and therefore they are congruent and notice that angle three is also going to be because if we look we said that angle two was 80 degrees and therefore if we were looking here we'd say well this is 180 degrees Therefore, angle three must also be 100 degrees, which means it's congruent with angle number one. So we would look and say, oh, we're going to put two tick marks in these. Because if it had one tick mark, I mean, they all equal 80 degrees, and they don't. So we have to put a second tick mark in there to say we're talking about a different set of angles that are congruent, all right? which means they have the same measurement. And if you laid one over the top of the other, it would be the same thing, okay? So what we could say is that vertical angles are congruent. Okay, and that's what you need to write down. Vertical angles are congruent. And you need to understand what a vertical angle is. It is that they share a, a vertex. They're opposite sides of opposite angles of two intersecting lines or segments, right? And so those are vertical angles. So if we look, what would be the vertical angles to five? What would be the vertical angle to five? And what would be the vertical angle to six? And so you would look and say, well, so five, that vertical, the opposite angle of 5 is 7. So those two are congruent. And 6, we'll put two tick marks here. The vertical angle to 6 is 8. So these two angles are congruent. Now, all you have to know is that that's what it is, and now use that in solving problems. Okay. So now, when we look at this, we could do one of a couple of things. So now this is where you get to pick what you're going to do, right? If we look, angle Z is vertical to the one that's measured 103. So that means they're equivalent. 
which means the measure of angle Z equals 103 degrees. That's that simple. You just solved it. That's all the work you have to show. Now, <clears throat> we need to also know that this angle over here on this side is congruent to this side because those two are vertical angles. Okay, so what we could say is that 6x plus 23 equals plus 103 is going to equal 180, right? So we could write it out like that. So we could say what we're really doing is if we label this as 1, 2, 3, 4, right? We could say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is going to equal 180 degrees. And if you were doing a two-column proof, you'd say because they are uh, supplementary, because they make a straight line, right? And we know that the measure of angle 2 is 103. So we're just going to put 103 degrees there, right? And then we know that the only thing we really know about angle number 1 is that it's 6x plus 23, right? And that those equal 180. And then we solve. So then you would solve, have this, combine the like terms, 6x plus 126. Of course, then you're going to solve by subtracting 126 from both sides. Then you're going to have that 6x, 54. And then you're going to solve by dividing both sides by 6. And you get that x equals 9. So we found the value of x, right? And if we want to know the measure of that, so some of you might have looked at it and said, oh, well, I know that, and you would show your work for this, right? That 180 minus 103 equals 77. So then you could have said, well, 6x plus 23 equals 77. And then subtracted 23 from both sides. Gotten that 6x equals 54. Divided both sides by 6 and gotten x equals 9. But notice that either way, you got to show me how you got the 77 or just start from the beginning. You have to show, you have to justify your answer, okay? I mean, that's, so really all we're talking about is using this and then solving an equation, which is something we did in second semester, second term, okay? So again, I'm going to label these real quick. Because I know that when I look at example three, that I know that there's some things I already understand. Notice these are segments that cross. So it's not always that they're lines, okay? So I know these angles are congruent. I also can look and say, they're telling me the measure of angle three is the 63 degrees. And they want me to find the measure of angle one, two, and three. Now, look, we just got easier because now you know these, because of their vertical angles, you could say because they're vertical angles, the measure of angle one is 63 degrees. That's it. You're done. Because they're vertical angles. And now you got to go back in and do the math, right? So you'd say, you could say that these two, right? Measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180 degrees. And that means the measure of angle 3 is 63 degrees, right? So 63 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180 degrees. You're going to subtract 63 from both sides. And you're going to get that the measure of angle 4 equals... 117, oops, not 100, yeah, 117 degrees. Now that you know that this is 117 degrees, 
you know that these are vertical, that two and four are vertical angles. So you could say the measure of angle two equals 117 degrees because they're vertical angles. Isn't that a lot? I mean, that's easier than solving it all over again, right? Because now you can say these are vertical angles, and because they're vertical angles, vertical angles are congruent. So that becomes that shortcut, right? Okay, so let's look at the next one. Okay, so again, you know, it used to, your parents may have seen where they had to use a two column proof to, to do this. But really, what we know is, let's just mark it right away. We know that this angle is congruent to this angle because they're vertical angles. And we know that this angle is congruent to this angle because they're vertical angles. Remember, we put a tick mark for one, and this is a tick mark right there. Right? And we put two tick marks for the other ones that are congruent, but not congruent to the 96 degree. So when we're solving for X, we can just go off of that and say that, let's say we were to say this is measure, this is angle one, two, three, four. We could say the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle four. Therefore, 96 equals 8X plus 48. Then you would solve that. Okay, go ahead and solve that. And we could then then we would have to say for Z then we could say that the measure of angle Z plus ninety-six equals well because we know that these are right, 180 degrees because they're supplemental. So these are going to equal 180 degrees. So now solve that. So I'm gonna just say hit pause. Solve these two. Okay, go. Okay, and so you should have gone through the steps of solving to find out um, the measure of angle two, right? You, you would say, or to find out x, you'd say 96 equals x plus 48, x plus 48, subtracted 48 from both sides, got an 8x equals 48, divided both sides by 8, got an x equals 6. Okay, and z, since it's just the whole angle, right, then you just say the measure of angle z, or measure of angle 3, you could have said that also, right? plus 96 equals 180. Subtract 96 from both sides, you get this Z equals 84. I mean, some of you probably did that one in your head, but I'm just asking you to show me what you did in your head in an equation. You're showing that you could still do what we did in Chapter 2. That's what you're showing us, that you can still solve an equation. But now you're applying that equation to geometry. Okay, so that's the. this is the lesson for the day. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video. And then what I'm going to do is post a review video that you can that you'll watch to be able to review for the quiz. So if you could do all of that, and you can do what's in this lesson, you should knock that quiz out. But this this next video will the video coming up next will be just a review for the quiz. Okay, good luck.